everyone! Today we're gonna talk about one of the classifications of noise which is the uncorrelated noise. So, nung nakaraang video, nagkaroon na tayo ng overview about noise at nabanggit natin doon yung uncorrelated noise. Pero for this video, mas pag-uusapan natin siya para mas maintindihan natin. So, uncorrelated noise. This kind of noise is present at all time. It is subdivided into internal and external noise. Pero aside doon, meron din tayong tinatawag na miscellaneous noise. Ayan. So, dito sa dalawang figure na nandito, which is figure A and figure B, sa figure A, makikita natin ang itsura ng isang signal without noise. So, very smooth lang siya, ganun. And sa figure B naman, makikita natin yung itsura ng signal with noise. External noise. So, again, um, ang uncorrelated noise ay internal, external, and miscellaneous noise. So, first, let's go to external noise. External noise is noise that is generated from outside the device or circuit. The three primary sources of external noise are atmospheric, extraterrestrial, and man-made. So, in other words, yung external noise depends on the nature of the electrical environment in which the system is used. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga outside factors na nagpo-cause ng noise. Yeah. So, under the external noise, first we have the atmospheric noise. It is a naturally occurring electrical disturbances that originate within the Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric noise is commonly called static electricity and is familiar. Is the familiar sputtering, cracking, and so on often heard from speaker when there is no signal present. So, itong atmospheric noise, Para mas madali natin matandaan, ito yung mga noise or mga electrical disturbances na nag-o-originate within the Earth's atmosphere. Ano-ano yung mga yun? Siyempre, ayun yung mga lightning or or yung kidlat or kapag may mga thunderstorm. Uh, isa pang tawag dito sa atmospheric noise ay static electricity. The nature of the mechanism generating this noise is such that very little of it is crea created in the VHF range and above. The frequencies above 30 MHz are limited to LOS propagation. Next to atmospheric noise is the extraterrestrial noise. It consists of electrical signals that originate from outside Earth's atmosphere. It originates from the sun, the stars, the Milky Way, and other galaxies. This is also known as deep space noise or space noise. Space noise is further subdivided into solar noise and cosmic noise. So, paikliin lang natin, extraterrestrial noise, ito yung mga signal na nagmumula outside the Earth's atmosphere. So, kung yung atmospheric noise within the Earth's atmosphere, itong extraterrestrial outside the Earth's atmosphere. Ito yung mga noise na nagmumula sa sun, sa stars, Milky Way, galaxies, and sa iba pang bagay na outside the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, ang iba pang tawag dito ay deep space noise or space noise. And sabi nga, Subdivided pa ito into solar noise and cosmic noise. So, ano ba yun? Solar noise generated directly from the sun's heat. Solar flares are large eruptions of electromagnetic radiation from the sun lasting from minutes to hours. Yan. So, yung solar noise ay galing sa sun. Sa init ng sun. Yan. Next is the cosmic noise often called black body noise and is distributed fairly evenly through the sky. Next naman is man-made noise. This noise is produced by mankind. Sources are spark producing mechanisms such as commutators in electric motors, automobile ignition system, AC power generating and switching equipment, fluorescent light, and it is also referred to as industrial noise. So, from the name itself, itong man-made noise ay 
mga noise na produced by mankind and it is also called industrial noise. So after that, we have the internal noise. Yeah. So internal noise is a noise generated in all electronic device or circuit, both passive and active components. So kung yung external, ito yung mga outside factors, itong internal, ito naman yung mga factors within the device itself. So, first, we're gonna talk about shot noise. Um, it is uh, a noise caused by random variations in the arrival of electrons or holes at the output electrode of the amplifying device. Sometimes called transistors, transistor noise and is an additive to thermal noise. So, in other words, yung shot noise ay caused by random variations in the arrival of electrons. Uh, additive siya to thermal noise at ang other term sa kanya ay transistor noise. Yan. Ngayon, aalamin natin kung paano nga ba mag-solve ng shot noise. The, measure the measurement of noise in this type is due to current it possessed in which is given with the formula I n is equal to the square root of 2 q i b in which the I n is the shot noise, the RMS shot noise current which is um, which has the unit of amperes okay, the shot noise current and then we have the q which is the charge of an electron and is constant with the value of 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19. And we have the IBC, which is the diode current. And we have the BW, which is the bandwidth. So that's the formula for shot noise. And we also have another formula. Because on a PN junction semiconductor, there exist two different current influencing the RMS shot noise current, which are the IDC or the direct diode current and the ID or the reverse saturation current. Then for this situation, we use the formula I n is equal to the square root of 2 Q quantity I D C plus 2 I D quantity B W in which the I n again is the shot noise current. The Q is the charge of the electron. The IDC is the di diode current. The ID is the reverse saturate, satur saturation current. And the BW is the bandwidth. So let's try to solve a problem regarding shot noise. So the question is, a diode noise generator produces 94 nanoampere noise current in a receiver whose bandwidth is about 250 kilohertz what must be the current through the diode so dun sa question na yun ang shot noise daw ay 94 nanoamp okay and then ang Q natin which is constant laging yun ang charge ng electron we have 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19 and then um, for our bandwidth Sabi, it is 250 kilohertz. So, ang hinahanap ay yung IDC. Okay? Hinahanap yung diode current. So, from the formula that we have, we have IN square is equal to the square root of 2 QIDC BW. We're gonna substitute all, all the given that we have and input it on our calculator. We press shift solve and then we'll get 1.17 mega amp so derive lang natin yung we can also derive the formula para masolve natin yung IDC or we can simply do the shift solve in our calculator so for our second problem we have determined the shot noise of the PN junction 
with a 40 milliamp current running through the diode and a reverse saturation current of 300 microamp over a 75 kilohertz bandwidth. So, dito naman sa problem na to, dalawa na yung current na given para isolve natin. We have the diode current and the reverse saturation current. So, for the given, we have the bandwidth of 75 kilohertz. We have the ID or the reverse saturation current of 300 microamp. We have the IDC or the diode current of 40 milliamp. And the Q, which is constant, that is 1.602 times 10 raised to negative 19. So, um, before we proceed to the solution, uh, mag magandang tandaan din natin na ang I... D or ang reverse saturation current ay laging mas maliit kaysa sa IDC. So, if ever na we encountered some problems na may dalawang um, current na given tapos hinahanap yung shot noise tapos hindi binanggit kung alin doon yung ID or yung IDC Tatandaan lang natin na kung ano yung mas maliit, yun lagi yung reverse saturation current. So, tulad nito, sa case na to, um, ang mas maliit ay yung ID. So, with 300 microamp, yun ang ating reverse saturation current. Pero dito naman sa problem natin, inindicate naman na yun yun. So, with our form, using our formula, we have the... IN is equal to the square root of 2Q quantity IDC plus 2ID quantity BW. We, we put all the given that we have and the answer will be 43.9 nanoamp. So try to solve this problem on your own. The problem is a diode noise generator has a diode current of 67 milliamp in a receiver whose bandwidth is about 250 kilohertz. Determine the noise current it has produced. Now let's move on to another type of internal noise. We have the thermal noise. So, uh, thermal noise, noise produced by the random movement of electrons in a conductor due to heat or thermal agitation, also referred to as Johnson Nicholas noise or Brownian noise or Gaussian noise. So, kinetic theory shows that the temperature of a particle is a way of expressing its internal kinetic energy. Thus, Temperature of a body is the statistical root mean square or RMS value of the velocity of motion of particles in the body. Then it becomes apparent that the noise generated by a resistor is proportional to its absolute temperature and at the same time proportional to the bandwidth over with the noise is to be measured. So with that um, statement, we can say that Pn or the maximum noise power output of the resistor is directly proportional to Tb which is equal to Kpb in which K is the Boltzmann constant which is always 1.38 times 10 raised to negative 23 joule per Kelvin. Then you have the temperature or the absolute temperature which has the unit of Kelvin. So, every time na magsasolve tayo ng thermal noise, ang temperature na gagamitin natin, ang unit dapat ay Kelvin. And then, the bandwidth, the B or the bandwidth, which is the bandwidth of interest. And the Pn there is, the, again, the maximum noise power output of a resistor. So, sample problem. Uh, for an electronic device operating at a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius with a bandwidth of 15 kilohertz determine the thermal noise power in watts. So, ang una natin gagawin is, kung mababansin nyo, ang given na temperature ay naka-Celsius, naka 24 degrees. So, 
kailangan natin siya i-convert sa Kelvin. And to convert Celsius to Kelvin, we use the formula, uh, the Celsius plus 273. So, 24 plus 273 will get 297 Kelvin. And then, the bandwidth is given, which is 15 kilohertz. And then, we have the Boltzmann constant, which is uh, 1.38 times 10. There's to negative 23 Joule per Kelvin. So, ang hinahanap ay ang thermal noise power. So, again, ang thermal noise power ay equal sa KTB. So, we multiply the Boltzmann constant times 297 times uh, 15,000. And then, we'll get 6.15 times 10 raised to negative 17 watts. So, that's our PN. Now, try to solve this problem on your own. The problem is for an amplifier operating at a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius with a bandwidth of 25 kHz, determine the to total noise power in watts and dBm. So, that's the problem that you have to solve. Uh, that's all for this video. Thank you for listening.